Hello everyone, welcome to Game of Societal Maniacs. This is the new show that we're starting, Backlog Cabin. It's uh, just going to be me, Kirk, playing games that are on my backlog. Uh, as you can see, today we are starting with Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. I'm a uh, big fan of the Mortal Kombat franchise. I have spent way too much on uh, collectibles and stuff like that. So, um... Just gonna go ahead and... Huh, guess I must have subtitles on by default. Should've done this first, I'm sorry. Um... Yes? But, uh, anyways, so I figured while I was doing this that I'd talk to you guys and explain that um, basically we don't want to have um, all of our Let's Plays be low quality, blind Let's Plays. Not that there's anything wrong with blind Let's Plays for the most part, but especially when they're the Let's Plays that me and Ashley are doing together, uh, it would probably be better if at least one of us knows what's going on. So... It, I don't find it very entertaining when... Um, when someone's essentially just playing, uh, I'm gonna play as. Anyways, I'm just gonna talk for a few more seconds. Um, okay. Shit. Um, it's not as entertaining to watch someone do a let's play when they have no fucking idea what they're doing if there's two people who don't know what they're doing. Uh, but if it's just one person, I feel it's a little more palatable. Um,. So, I figured I'd just do a series that's specifically just blind Let's Plays. And I figured it's a great way to get through my backlog. I've gotten a little ways through this game, but I never finished it. Um, for those of you who don't know, this game is uh, basically a retelling of the events between 1 and 2, and maybe some of 2? It was kind of a retcon at the time, but at the same time, not really. It's... It makes about as much sense as most of pre-Mortal Kombat 9 Mortal Kombat does. But, uh, you probably will see a good amount of... Not a good amount, but a decent amount of Mortal Kombat on our channel. Um, I really like the franchise, and I figured it'd be great to, you know, play Mortal Kombat on here. And I figured this would be a great game to start with. It's cheesy, it's odd... It's got some interesting, like, character stuff going on in there. Well, I mean, interesting for the Mortal Kombat universe. But, uh, this is a, essentially a 3D beat-em-up. Which is an odd genre for Mortal Kombat, but it was, like, relatively well-received, and it's kind of cool. So, I'm gonna play as Kung Lao, because he's a little more, um... Honestly, I feel like Liu Kang is a little bit of a... I really thought this game would have subtitles, I'm sorry. Um, you probably don't need to... I don't think they talk very much to this. Basically, the long and short of it is that in the... Technically, the story, it was retconned in, sort of. But the story of Mortal Kombat 1 is that there was a big tournament. Uh, they, it was a tournament that happened once a generation to decide the fate of Earthrealm. Because a realm called Outworld wanted to take over Earthrealm, uh, have it for themselves, and so, to defend themselves, Earthrealm instant, uh, the Elder Gods allowed Earthrealm to hold this Mortal Kombat tournament. Outworld have to win ten tournaments in a row to be able to claim Earthrealm. And, uh, as you're about to see, Liu Kang won Mortal Kombat and thus protected Earthrealm. It would have to be a whole nother 10 tournaments before they were able to take over Earthrealm again. This was the 10th tournament in a row that they would have won if it wasn't for Liu Kang. So, essentially, Liu Kang rose to the challenge and won the Mortal Kombat tournament. For those of you who don't know anything about the Mortal Kombat franchise. The story is of, like, the story of the franchise is not that great. 
I mean, it's it's got some cool stuff to it, but for the most part, it's a um, it's really a hodgepodge of stuff that's never really explicitly stated in game, except for like endings and character bios. And it's debatable which of those are canon and which aren't. So the general rule for literally, like, years was basically if two endings aren't, like, mutually exclusive, they're true. And anything that directly contradicts another thing is not true. Which, of course, there were some... And, if, of course, if something was, um... If something was explicitly stated to uh, happen in the next game, like it was stated, for instance, that Liu Kang was the winner of the first Mortal Kombat tournament in Mortal Kombat 2. So, in that aspect, it was, like, obviously the canon ending was Liu Kang's, but pieces of other people's endings are technically canon as well. There have been so many different designs for Goro. Sorry, I just wanted to... I'm trying to keep this interesting. I mean, it's a cool little fight scene. I'm not going to skip it, but I've always found it weird, the different decisions as far as Goro's pectoral muscles go. They've changed it again and again. Sometimes they have him have two sets of pectoral muscles. Sometimes just one. Sometimes there are no nipples. Sometimes there are only two nipples. I don't think I've ever seen it with four nipples, but it's... I mean... I don't know. It seemed... It would... But then again, Shiva only has... Thank you, Raiden, with the only piece of exposition that really happened in this entire video. Um, but, essentially, Shiva only has one set of breasts. So I guess it would make sense that no matter what, Goro would only have one set of nipples, but at the same time, why doesn't Goro, or then, wouldn't Goro never have two, uh, I guess two sets of pecs makes sense, but that also makes it confusing with Shiva, does she have a set of pecs underneath her breasts, or are they hidden under the top half of her, like, set of breasts, or are they hidden underneath, I, like, doesn't seem to make much sense. Okay. So I thought he might actually say something interesting story-wise, basically more exposition. So I've played a little bit of this game, never beat it, so technically it's still on my backlog and I wasn't going to start a game halfway through. Um I actually kind of like this game, not a huge amount, but Chances are I'm just going to use whatever I decide to mash out on the controller. But yeah, it's a cute little game. It's like, as far as beat em ups go, it's not half bad. Definitely one of the, I would argue, better. Oh, that's cute. They added in the Dan Force and Toasty. I don't know why there was nothing to really prompt it, but okay. So, like, <sighs> thank you. Um, I don't know. There's really nothing to really justify the. I don't know. As far as 3D beat em ups go, this isn't bad. It just feels a little unjustified that. We got a Mortal Kombat beat em up. Oh, good. Uh, the game isn't very hard. It's. Thank you. Should probably stop picking those up. But then again, probably not a bad idea for me to know how to play the game. So I'll just pick them up and. Oh. Oh my god. Okay, you do have a special meter. 
that immediately refills. So, okay. But it's not a bad game in its own right. I mean, if this, don't get me wrong, if this didn't have Mortal Kombat attached to it, considering this was a PS2 game, it probably would not have done well. I mean, at this point, we kind of had a replacement for the beat em up genre in um, the. What do you call it? Uh, hack and Slash, like Devil May Cry, God of War kind of genre. So this really wasn't necessary, but at the same time, it's actually fun in its own right. Then again, this would have been much more enjoyable as a PS1 game, and as a PS2 game, it kind of falls short a little bit. But then again, the P game, uh, the all of the games that we got on the PS1 for Mortal Kombat were not that great. Cool. Oh, I have to hold it. It's, um, I mean, it's not a bad mechanic, but I... I guess it's kind of the same as Z-targeting in Legend of Zelda as far as, like, blocking lock-on goes, but then again... Ocarina of Time did it much better, and I don't feel like... I don't feel like combat was really... <sighs> was this really necessary? Yeah, I've already been doing that. So... I feel like Ocarina of Time's wasn't focused on um, combat, so having a system where you lock on to block, which makes sense, so that you're actually, you know, facing the thing you're blocking, it makes a lot more sense than just having an omnidirectional block, or having to constantly finagle your direction. Z-targeting was a great idea, but I don't think it works as well here. As opposed to, say, Devil May Cry's lock-on mechanic where you could then dodge, you could block, and you would always stay facing an enemy from a single button press. But then again, you can't really compare a, like, side pro- oh, still alive. Uh, you can't really compare a side project Mortal Kombat game with something like Devil May Cry. Huh. I've done almost nothing but talk during this episode. Um, I guess that's going to be it for this episode, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to continue this with this next power-up next time on Backlog Cabin.